Hello and a very warm welcome to you all. Thank you so much for joining the Distance Reflexology group and I hope that this group will continue to grow and in th that way we can all grow as, as therapists and as individuals. So that's really the purpose of me setting this group up and um, getting it moving. And also to just bring distance reflexology out in the open and to the world and, um, and let it become part of our everyday, the same way that reflexology is. So um, since I've set up, I have been asked loads of questions and thank you. Please do keep them coming and let's all just keep sharing. So for those of you who don't know me, hello, my name is Wendy Watson and I've been a reflexologist probably for about the last 18 years, consciously. And how I initially came to distance reflexology was about five or six years ago during a years-long shamanic training program and I sort of stumbled upon using reflexology together with a shamanic technique in order to bring healing to my client. And um, I have shared a video about that story earlier on in, in this group. So please do feel free to go back and, and have a look at it or if you have any questions, feel free to message me. So um, the main question I've been asked is the obvious one, what is distance reflexology? And how does it work? So I think the name is is what it is. Um, it, it's reflexology from a distance, which is really rather handy given the fact that we are all in lockdown and we are having to distance ourselves from our, um, our clients and people that we know. So um, this is a fantastic way of bringing what we already know and love to our clients without having to be in the same room as them. Um, and uh, the results are um, amazing and I think everybody has been really gobsmacked um, as I have been um, every time I do it and have been doing it for the last, as I say, five or six years. So um, that's, that's what distance reflexology is, literally sending reflexology from a distance. And so how does it work? I suppose there's um, no right or wrong way. I think if you are already um, practicing Reiki, you would know and have experienced um, distance healing. But you really don't have to be qualified in universal healing in order to uh, send it. We have all, at some time or another, sent our thoughts and opened our hearts and sent our, our thoughts and healing to our loved ones, to friends, family and even clients. So we already kind of know how to do it and perhaps haven't even been doing it that consciously, maybe just a, a random thought or perhaps in your, you know, as you're going to sleep and you're thinking of somebody, thinking, oh, I do hope that they are well and that they are okay. And we often say that to people when Perhaps on social media, they say that they are ill and we say we send you lots of love and light and healing. So we're saying it all the time and I suppose maybe um, subconsciously we're actually doing it. So don't worry about, oh, I haven't had training or all of that. I believe we all have this uh, ability that we are born with. Um, but... So it's really about intention and I think whether we are one-to-one -one or whether we are working from a distance, intention is always key. I think it's very important, in my opinion, that we are always grounded and that we are also connected to those universal energies. So connecting to the earth, grounding ourselves, and then connecting to the sky energies um, and just being that open channel for that beautiful love and that, um, very, that white light coming down through us. And as we channel this light 
and this love through us and then opening up our heart space and sending that beautiful energy out to people that is healing and our thoughts are what uh, allow those energies to get to where they're going so the way in which I perform a distance reflexology is very much the same as I would if I was giving a one-to-one -one treatment so the first thing is obviously set up your space so you know some people like to put on a uniform um, some people don't need that but it just helps to get you into the the mindset of working um, create your space in your room you might want to burn incense or candles have some nice relaxing music going on um, whatever you would normally do before a client comes in I like to burn sage and I smudge myself and my space cleansing it um, of any uh, negative energies and also just uh, sage helps to bring you into the here and now so that you're very focused and ready for what you're about to do and mindful of what you're doing. So the next stage is to prepare yourself. So you've got your, your beautiful space and now we're going to prepare ourselves. So before I work, I always ground myself. And for me, I visualize roots coming from the soles of my feet down deep into the earth and connecting to the earth. And then drawing up that earth energy up through my roots um, and up through into all the cells of my body. And harnessing that beautiful mother earth energy and love. And as our feet connect us to the earth, so they connect us to our soul. They're the windows of our soul. And so for me, that's really where the shamanic practice comes in. So whilst I'm busy connecting to the earth, I'm also connecting to the ancestors. And I'm connecting to those earth energies and the plants and the animals. And those energies that wish to come and help with the healing process. And as I say, we bring that energy all the way up. And as we reach the crown, the top of our head, we open this up and we bring down the white light from the sky energy. Um, some people call it angel energy, God energy, prana, um, the, you know, the sky energy. And uh, we just allow that to flow through us and allowing ourselves to be the hollow vessel. So getting our mind out the way and just settling down into our heart space opening that to love and to light and to that healing so now that we are ready our space is ready we're ready and we've asked our clients previously um, we've set a time saying okay we're going to meet at two o'clock the same as you would put in a, a, a note in your diary for for a one-to-one -one meeting we do exactly the same setup for distant client so you've got your time set up and hopefully your client is in a nice quiet space where they won't be dis disturbed or interrupted, which I know is difficult with us all being home and kids and husbands and oh, animals and all the rest of it. Um, but hopefully they can find a bit of time for themselves and be nice and comfortable. And then what you would do is you are all nice and connected with the earth and the sky and you then connect to your client. So just consciously think about them and visualize them as if they were lying on the couch in front of you. And then once you've made that connection with them, and you will feel it, um, once you've made that connection and you ask your client to connect to you also, you just say to them, you know, just lie there and think of me. Imagine that you're on the couch with me and receiving a treatment. And if you've never received one, just imagine that you're about to and so power of the mind don't forget is so powerful and so um let's just this is another whole story but very very powerful so you're now connected with your client and now you perform the reflexology 
So in your mind's eye, you would see the person's foot and you would start doing the whole treatment, starting with the relaxation and then going on to all the specific reflexology points. Um, some people like to use a photograph so that they have something to focus on and visualize. Some people like to use their hands and visualize um, whilst they're actually physically working on their hands. And some people actually physically work on their feet or if they have a model of a foot, they work on that. Um, in Reiki, some people might use a teddy bear. And um, reflexology, you could do exactly the same thing. You know, have your teddy bear there and imagine that you're doing the, the, the feet um, of the, the person and using the teddy bear as a guide. So, personally, I also connect to the uh, universal energies, as I say, those um, ascended masters. I use the Reiki symbols. Um, and I use other symbols that have been given to me over time. Um, and I call in my guides and my ancestors. And I also call in any animal allies that may wish to come and help or may be of use during the treatment. As a shamanic practitioner, one of the things that we do is we scan the client and we then perform what, what's known as um, either an extraction or a soul um, revival, so bringing the soul back together. And we use a drum to journey to take us um, into the space of the client so that we are able to bring back harmony within the body. So personally, when I'm offering a distant treatment, I also bring in those techniques um, because that's who I am. That's, that's what I love doing. That's what I've trained to do. Um, for me, the feet, as I say, are so connected to the earth and they are the souls and the, win the windows to our souls. So, um, and as shamanic, treatments are so connected to the earth for me that works that's what i love to do and i love those powers but um you don't have to do it in that way and um, once you've completed your treatment i normally uh, give thanks to the energies that have helped and then i disconnect with my client so the same way as you connected, you can form a little bridge, a little rainbow, your belly button um, to their belly button, a, a, an umbilical cord to theirs, um, whichever way in which you do it. And I just disconnect that so that um, I don't have a load of people attached to me all day because otherwise I'll go do lally and I'm already nuts enough. So we just disconnect as you would with a client face to face. Sometimes um, you can go and physically wash your hands again as you would after one to one face to face client. And then you would write down some case notes and you would contact that client and speak to them and say, well, this is what I experienced. Um, what did you experience? And they can tell you. I think it's really nice if you are able to take a photograph um, a before and after, ask your client to take a before and after photograph so that we have more evidence because what we say and what we can actually see offers so much more value and um, it makes it so much more believable um, to all the skeptics out there. So that's really the way in which I do it and um, I'll be sharing more techniques and going in a little bit deeper and um, answering more questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to get in contact um, and also feel free to keep sharing, sharing your experiences because it's really helping us all to grow and also helping to ground this concept. So that's me for today and I wish you all a fantastic day and keep sharing your distance reflexology with each other with your clients 
and with this group. Lots of love, lots of light, and lots of distance healing. Take care.